going to do two motions. You don't mind? Okay. okay. Can we stop the yeah. motion stuff now? So I'm going to throw them off. Oh, uh, yeah. You can take them home. Oh, oh, sure. I'm sending them over to her. I'll keep going. Are we on? Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, October 9th, 2018. And I would appreciate that all of you out there turn off your cell phones at this meeting as it is being recorded. Ellen, will you please do the roll call? Good evening everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Ms. Evans? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson, Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative, Ms. Fritz Aguiar? Present. Aguirre, excuse me. Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, the board invites our administrators in the audience, who are always here, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Emmett, I don't think we have a staff recognition tonight. None this evening. No. Okay. So next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on September 25th. 2018 are there any corrections <coughs> okay seeing none may I have a motion to approve these minutes so second all right all in favor aye, aye. opposed any abstentions those minutes are approved so is there anyone wishing to make a public comment please come on up to the podium and state your name and address and may I remind you that you have a five minute limit Okay. All right, Mr. Emmett, communications tonight? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. A uh, few items for you. Uh, just a reminder to members of the community that tomorrow is the annual walk, bike to school day uh, at our elementary level. So please be alert around our schools for a, a large increase in the number of walkers and bike riders. Um, one of the things that we did was to make sure that we let the police department know Police Department has let our crossing guard uh, group know as well to be on the lookout. So uh, again, tomorrow is walk and bike to school day. Uh, weather is looking to be pretty good tomorrow, so we're expecting a, a very large turnout throughout the town. Uh, we had a work group meeting uh, regarding the phase one process of the enrollment and facilities study this past Friday. Uh, at the present time, all elementary schools have been assessed. The enrollment report is nearly complete. At the October 23rd Board of Ed meeting, we will have a presentation regarding the findings and options for future planning. The middle school will also be assessed. It has not yet been assessed. Um, however, it is not part of the uh, renovation process. Uh, we're assessing that in order to identify future capital improvement needs. Interviews for the uh, principal positions will be taking place next week. Uh, we'll be doing phone screen. Uh, we've looked at uh, Resumes and applications at this point in time. We're expecting that uh, we will be hiring our next two administrators that are building based uh, in the near future. Just to let you know, also, uh, we're looking for an interim uh, AP at Weathersfield High School. We have a candidate we've identified. Um, we expect that this candidate uh, will be coming to Weathersfield High School within the next week. Um, so we're pleased with that. And also just to let you know, with the technology position, we continue to work on that. And we're looking at ways to reconfigure the department that uh, increases efficiency, maintains the strong relationship that we have with the town, with shared services, and potentially saves a little bit of money as well. So we are currently working on that. We met with one of our um, tech folks today. Uh, and we have the latest kind of iteration. I'll have that in the Friday update for you this week. And then finally tonight, <clears throat> I would like to say happy birthday to a longtime viewer of the Weathersfield Board of Education meetings. This lady never misses a meeting. So, Miss Jane Silver, happy 100th birthday <laughs> tomorrow, and thank you for watching the Weathersfield Board of Education meetings. That's communications. Okay, thank you. Any 
Questions for Mr. Emmett? Okay, we'll move on then. All right, tonight we do have a few action items. Kevin, would you read action item 6A for us? Of course. Uh, move, I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a two-year contract extension for autumn transportation continuing services through June 30, 2022. Okay, um, do we have, is there a second first? Second. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Kazaka, if you could come up and speak to this, please. Good evening. In your packet there, you have the details regarding the contract extension with Autumn Transportation. We are currently in year two of the original three-year contract. Autumn is proposing the two-year extension. Year four, the first year of the extension, would see a 2.5% increase in costs. Year five would be a 0% increase. And year three for next year is also a 2.5% increase. In addition, Autumn is going to install the Z-Pass mm -hmm. system in all buses and for all students. This would allow for parents and guardians to track with an RFID card and as the students enter and exit the bus. That would be at the cost of the contractor. And Autumn will install rear-mounted cameras in all vehicles. We currently only have a front-mounted camera. Okay. Any questions for Matt? This one. John? Does the Z Pass also tell the driver if a child does not get off the bus? That's a good question. We'll have to look at the details. We've only read what has been provided from Autumn at this point. It does say here on the entry and exit, so they would know if they didn't exit the bus on this. I don't know how much information is passed along to the driver. It, it may be more through the, the app parent. for the parents oh, and guardians. It, it, yeah, it goes to the parents. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. We also like the addition of the camera in the rear of the bus. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when we have a complaint of some uh, malicious behavior on the bus, it's happening in the back where you don't have a lot of detail. So for, from a safety perspective and you know, being able to enforce our uh, code of discipline, that will certainly be a help. The other piece, and we talked a little bit about this at our finance subcommittee meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, having this in place and knowing over the next two years what our number looks like and knowing that we have a zero coming up within, this, uh, within the extension of the contract is certainly helpful from a budgetary standpoint as well. Hey, John? Yeah, I have uh, two questions. Um, how are we doing? How are, do we, are we encouraged with Autumn? They're easy to work with. Oh, absolutely. I know that we've yep. uh, worked Dis into Dispatch a new partnership. Dispatch and management have been very responsive. We always have your typical beginning of the year issues with stops and some delays, but it's been much improved from the previous contractor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things is how do we encourage our students to take the buses? How do we encourage them to utilize the bus? I know we have, uh, you know, walk and bike to school day. Maybe we can do those that should be taking a bus to school day. You know, it's just to give them that opportunity. You know, I'm not going to take a bus. Well, we're paying for you to take the bus, so take it. Yeah, and you do see at the secondary level that there's typically capacity. Students find alternate transportation methods. Right. For various reasons, mm -hmm. but... I mean, that might be a nice idea. Who knows? Do a jingle or something. <laughs> Do a commercial. Kevin? Um, Matt, does this um, prevent us from making any changes in the future regarding um, any decisions we make regarding transportation, be it if we eliminate door-to-door, -door, if we do cluster, if we do something regarding kindergarten? Are we locked in? Um, we are not locked in with the number of yeah. vehicles. The contract does not explicitly state 19 or 20 vehicles. It's just based on what we set as policy and how we determine the routes. Okay. So if we discuss in the future eliminating, say, door-to-door -door service for the kindergarten students and we improve our efficiency and lose a bus, there's no obligation to pay for that cost. Excellent. Thank you. I have one additional question. Um, with the contract uh, extension, has Corpus Christi been notified of are moving forward with autumn and the increase not at this time if we have approval we will certainly reach okay. out to administration yeah. any other discussion okay let's take a vote all in favor aye, aye. opposed any abstentions <coughs> motion 6a passes thank you matt all right, motion 6B, Diane is not here tonight. And Kevin, you said you would read sure. this for us. 
I move that the Weathershield Board of Education contribute one thousand dollars to the two thousand nineteen Weathershield High School safe graduation party. Okay, is there a sec okay? Any discussion on this? Go ahead. <clears throat> with uh, this particular item, uh, this is a contribution that's made on a yearly basis. Last year, we did hold off on making this contribution until the November meeting because we did not have a budget. Uh, this is an item that is in our line item budget uh, and one that we have traditionally provided uh, to SafeGrad as they provide a tremendous service for the mm. safety and security of our kids following graduation. Okay, Eaton's over there shaking her head. Yes, you agree, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Okay, any other discussion on our safe grad? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> motion 6B passes. And Elaine, would you read motion 6C for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education cancel their regularly scheduled meeting of Tuesday, December 25th, 2018. Okay, second. second. Is there any discussion? Should we cancel their meeting or our meeting? <laughs> <laughs> John Cassio, I can't believe you don't have an, a, a comment on this. I, I'm reserving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. Okay, we'll move on to Board of Ed meetings held. We had a facilities and maintenance committee. Um, John Cassio, would you speak to that? Thank you. Uh, yes, we had a facilities and maintenance committee meeting on Thursday, October 4th. And one of the uh, unique uh, characteristics of this uh, particular meeting is that it's moving forward. Uh, we are excited about the level of uh, commitment uh, that we're uh, seeing within our district uh, with the changeover of uh, staff. Uh, Sally Katz uh, was right there with us at the meeting and she assured us the schools, you know, the front lines are right there for the schools. So it's great to have that open communication uh, with the town and it just kind of brings back that it's not the board of ed and it's not the town hall. It's what we discussed. It's Weathersfield. And so I think we're getting into that mindset, and that was really, um, you know, excellent. Uh, we do have a couple of issues uh, that Mike has alluded to regarding our schools uh, with our portable classrooms that we're reviewing at this point. So uh, the town is involved, the school board is involved as well. Uh, we. Uh, My John, are we talking all our portables or just the high crest one? We're reviewing all of our portables. Mm -hmm. They're quite old. I know. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason why we're doing that, Elaine, it, when you see the presentation on October 23rd, mm -hmm. the portable classrooms, and that comes to our facility study, we have asked the uh, Collier and Associates mm -hmm. individuals to uh, review um, classroom space. Mm -hmm. Util the correct class classroom space. So portable classrooms aren't the correct classroom spaces. So that's part of why we're having all no, portable thanks. classrooms being looked at at this point. Um, but as far as anything else, uh, shared services updates uh, are being held. I know that uh, Mike talks with Sally almost daily at times, mm -hmm. if not hourly. And uh, they do have an open door. I know Rich Bailey is right out there too as well, taking care of the grounds. So they really have stepped up as well as our custodial staff um, has done a great job uh, with our building. So I think that we're in good shape. Could we use more staff? Absolutely. So that's gonna be something that we as a board are gonna have to look at uh, when it comes budget time. More staff for facilities. Custodial <laughs> facilities. Because you can have a nice building, yeah, but, but really if you don't it. take care of it, yeah. it's not going to happen. Right. And with the technology uh, that utilizes and enforces our buildings for technology, those people need to be hired that have that electronic sense and technology and HVAC use. Mm -hmm. So they're just not painters and plumbers anymore. So um, I know at that meeting, Bobby was there, John Morris was there, Chris Healy, Mike myself, uh, 
Chuck uh, Warrington and uh, Sally Katz. So we had a good conversation. I don't know if anyone else from the committee. Yeah, no, it was great. It really is. The buildings are old. They take great care of old buildings. But just like an old house, you can only put so many Band-Aids on it until you finally then have some serious problems. And right now, we do have some serious problems in the portables that need to be addressed immediately. And I think the, the idea of doing this facility study is really taking a look at it from a perspective of, you know, what is the best option here? You know, I would rather put the money into a renovation or a rebuild as opposed to spending several hundred thousand dollars taking out the old portables only to put in new portables. Mm. The portables were designed to be there for a brief time, and they've been there for long beyond my tenure here in Wethersfield, which is 10 years. So they've outlived their useful life. You know, again, at Highcrest, we've dealt with issues with leaking, and we just replaced a roof on a portable. I would prefer to invest the money elsewhere. Um, so one of the things we've talked about within our uh, work group meeting and the facility study is the elimination of those portables. They have outlived their useful life, and I'd rather invest in buildings that are permanent and that um, are, are much more, more uh, better from a longevity perspective. And one of the things that you're, you'll see um, is that the staff in the administration in each school building has been involved with mm -hmm. looking at the classrooms, looking at the building, looking at what it can be used for and what it shouldn't be used for. Um, and, you know, they're working miracles <laughs> in what they can do in keeping things active and going. So uh, the story is the same in each school. They need work. You know, we've done a great job in uh, taking care of them. Um, but now we'll see a priority list, and that's what we wanted. We have the enrollment data, and now we're going into the facilities, actually seeing what the study's gonna do for us. And you'll be, uh, when we get the final report, we'll get to see where uh, a priority needs to go. Yeah, very interesting. I have a question for John. Go John, ahead, Elaine. this is going to be shown to us October 23rd, did Correct. you say? Mm -hmm. Could we get a copy beforehand mm -hmm. so we'd have questions ready, Mike? If, yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you. my expectation would be that would come to you in the More Friday the packet in yeah. advance. Uh, and if you had any questions yeah. in advance, certainly, yeah. as we would oh. do with like a data presentation for students. Oh, okay. I expect both Malone McBroom as well as Collier's reps will be here. They'll talk about the algorithms they use to yeah. make the enrollment projections and Collier's will take a look at you know and have numbers as to what repair costs would be if we leave it status quo as well as potential options that we have as well thank you you're welcome and you know you're not going to get it all in one meeting no you know so just <laughs> no. you know if you have questions write them down yeah, that's what I'm saying because I want ahead of time you know, it's going to be something that uh, we've asked the superintendent to keep the agenda light because we yeah it's we a gotta, big presentation it's going to be a big presentation mm -hmm. we were there last friday um for four hours mm -hmm. it was fun <laughs> it was it was so informative um i will say we did talk about inviting the town council to, to come mm -hmm. to the meeting yep. mm -hmm. that will be done okay any other questions it is such an important presentation and that's october 23rd okay thank you john Okay, meetings um, scheduled. We have policy and planning on <clears throat> October 15th at 6 o'clock. Student program and services was not canceled. It's on October 16th at 6.30. Um, CREC Council on October 17th at 11.30 a.m. And Finance and Information Management Committee before our next board meeting on October 23rd at 6 o'clock. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? No? All right. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. <clears throat> OK. Are there any board comments? John? Um, you know, it's been, it seemed like it was forever, but uh, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, kickoff uh, foundation, education foundation uh, meeting at the high school. And uh, we had a, a, a tour of the, the facility. 
uh, the, there was quite a bit of uh, public there. It was great. The kids were involved, um, and it's a great opportunity. So I had that opportunity to go. It was wonderful. Also had the ability to go to uh, last weekend's football game, and uh, the kids did great. The, the crowd was good. The team won, and the band, the dance team, and the cheer squad did a great job. Great. Anyone else for a board comment? Okay, John, you almost took away my thunder. I was going to talk. I, I know. Was be it. I was talking about the Weatherfield Education Foundation did have a successful inaugural event on Thursday night, the 27th, at the high school's high tech skills area, and they appreciate all the townspeople and businesses that turned up um, to hear presentations by our very skilled teachers and students. And I hope everyone will look into supporting the Weatherfield Education Foundation. Um, just go to their website. Um, the Friday updates from our schools continue to keep the board updated on all curriculum work, activities, and events at the school, the schools. We say thank you to all again, to the administrators and teachers for their communication. I appreciated reading the day in Ms. Hutner's class, first grade class at Emerson Williams, because the work of both the teacher and the students as they become emerging learners is so rewarding to all who've worked so hard to make our curriculum and our climate and culture the best for our young citizens. Um, and one last comment on the updates, the superintendent's remarks and the remarks from the schools are noted to how they are related to our new strategic plan. Um, I find this so important. I know the board finds it so important because we don't want the plan to be put on a shelf. It is a skinny plan. We made it purposely that way so it could become part. <laughs> there it is. Right here. here it is. <laughs> so it could, be, it, it could become part of the system's focus in all its work. Um, and it's a great way to drive everything to the goals that we want. Um, so, if there's no other board comments, Eden, how's life at the high school? Good evening. It's been fantastic. Everything's going great. We had our pep rally last Friday after the one that was scheduled was rained out, unfortunately. But there was a lot of school spirit. We had a wonderful time. Um, recently in advisory, we had um, roundtable discussions. And it actually didn't happen in every advisory, but one of the questions was how to get registered to vote. Mm. And it was disappointing that most students did not know how to get registered. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> My advisor went, who knows how to get registered? No one put their hand up. So, of course, I was like, I know. And the kids were like, you do? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm already registered. So I was explaining how to do it, and I was wondering if there's possibly a way that we could get students to register whether we do a drive or something because we have a deadline to be registered by the 30th of October and that's really important especially for seniors like me who will be 18 in time for the election seeing how you know this is the midterm and it's going to be a big deal this year and also this has been brought to me um, there's a concern for deaf students in classrooms teachers have been using videos to teach lessons but if they don't have closed captionings or um, a transcript available deaf students are not able to listen I have also brought this to the attention of Legal News, and they said that they will start putting um, closed captioning with it. Great. <clears throat> so, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Eden. Very good. Okay. Any other discussions? Okay. If there are none, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. All right. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all, and good night. I think that's a new record. Maybe they can do This is a Chromebook from the high school. These are the ones that we received this year. Yeah, because it's keeping it on. Especially, you know, kids carrying them in the hallways. I'm so worried that someone's going to drop it, but these kids are really. Starting to harass me.